Let's talk about URL patterns and how this portion works in conjunction with our view. Now URL patterns, you notice that I had this empty string that's in this path. So if I actually copy this and paste it down here and say home and put a slash at the very end of it and save it, I can actually go into home and that same thing will come out. Where if I use a different page like ABC, that won't show up. And the page not found is because we haven't routed a path to that view, right? So let's say for instance, I wanna call this contact and you know we can, we can actually ignore this name stuff for now, but if I wanna call this contact, sure, it could actually go to that same homepage view, but really you would probably wanna have another one called contact view. And again, we'll do args and keyword args. And then we'll return HTTP response. And then we'll just say H1 and contact page and close off that H1 tag. And then we would import that as well, just like that. And there we go. So that would give us that contact page. Pretty useful. Now what's actually happening inside of this path, right? So the URL, when you go to a Django page, right? So we, we go to a Django page right here and Django knows that something is being requested that's different. So the first thing that's being requested is just this home page, And then if I go to another page like contact, that's a new request and it's getting that item, whatever's in there. And Django is smart enough to know, hey, that URL is being requested. Look in this URLs.py or the main configuration that we have set up by default. It's gonna look for that URL. And then with a matching URL, it's gonna look for a view that is made to handle that URL, right? So we already had those views that were made to handle it. You know, we can have as many views as we want it's completely up to you. And in fact, your project might have a lot of views, right? So like social, about, whatever. Like all of those things you can absolutely start playing around with. And I recommend that you do. I recommend that you take this and play around in the sense that, hey, how does this actually work? And how can I make all of my own pages? Now there is a critical thing that is missing here, um, but I'm not gonna get into that just yet. What I will say is that remember, when we go to a URL, we're requesting something from that URL. It's kind of like knocking on the front door of somebody's address. I mean, it's not a whole lot different than that, except this is digital. We're going there, we're knocking, we're asking for something, or we're requesting something. In this case, we're requesting a web page that's at that URL. So what's actually happening is on these views, we have args and keyword args to just capture everything. So if I actually print it out, let's go ahead and print out args and keyword args and go back to that home page and look into our terminal. We see here are the things that are being passed. We have this WSGI request. Hmm, I'm requesting something. So that means that it actually is an argument that's coming through here. I can say request and then args, keyword args, right? So each one has requests coming in here by default. So if I go back, refresh, now my args and keyword args are empty and my request is absolutely in there. So I can print out that request and we can see it. So what does this request do exactly? Well, there's a lot of different things that it can do, but one of them that's important for us is request a user. So this is where that authentication stuff comes in. This is where logging in your users come in, but this is also how our views can access that. So if I refresh in here, I can see that, hey, my CFE user is logged in. Um, if I opened up an incognito window or just another browser or logged out, I would see that it's an anonymous user. It's not somebody that's actually logged in. Um, so, so both things are actually valid and they are really good to know because then I can do all sorts of stuff with this request user. Now that's a little bit more advanced. So before we get there, I wanna make this basic web page or this basic application work better for us. Like, 
so far we have this HTTP response and it's rendering out HTML and that's great and all, but you know, you might be familiar with HTML. Hopefully you have some background in HTML. Just having H1 being rendered, that's not very good. Like notice like my head is empty. It's just H1. That's the only thing that's coming back. So now's actually a really good time to stock, talk about the Django templating engine so we can override this HTTP response with a, another sort of thing called Django templating. That's something we'll do in the next one. So make sure you subscribe to get everything. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.